So this time I want to show you how to do what we call a two peg test with your automatic level although you can do it with a laser level to get the same results and the reason we do a two peg test is to check that our automatic level is still calibrated correctly and it's accurate. These things bump around in the boss's truck or your truck for a few years and if you don't get them calibrated regularly they're not going to give you correct measurements. This is a cheap uh, way, quick way that you can test it and then if it needs calibration you can send it away. So obviously the first thing we need to do is set up our tripod and our automatic level and get it set up somewhere. We've got a bit of room that we can spread out. We need to set up a peg about or a point about 30 meters away on both directions from the actual tripod. So if you're out in a, in a paddock, you can drive a peg into the ground. If you're on a concrete slab or a hard standing, you could just spray a mark or make some sort of mark on the ground to indicate it. 30 meters is ideal, but if you can't do that as far as possible, as long as it's even on both sides. So drive a peg in at those points, or put a mark on the ground. There's our peg, and we need to label them, so we know that one's point A or point point one and the other one's point B or point two doesn't really matter but we get them labeled and we know which one's which then need to get our mate with his staff to go to the first point and we need to take a reading to that staff so we go down look through the telescope and when we look through the telescope we're going to see something like this and we're going to need to make a little bit of a table bit of scrap paper, a bit of wood, so position 1 which is in the centre where we are now and position 2 will be a little bit later when we move to one end and then obviously peg A and peg B. So we take our reading, so 15, 10, 20, 30, 40 so we write that there under position 1 peg A. Then we get our mate with the staff to go down to peg B, he has to do all the walking and we get to take a reading on peg B. This is on top of the peg, not on the ground near it, on top of the peg, so it's the same all the time. So this time we've got 1550, or 1 meter 550, so we can write that into our table. And that's the first part of the test done. Then it's our turn to move. So we move the tripod from the middle of our two pegs up to one end can be either end, it doesn't matter, as long as it's on and off on the outside of the two pegs at one end. Then we get our mate with the staff again to go back to point A, back on top of the peg, and we take a reading of that. And this time, because we've moved the tripod and we're probably on a different level of ground, it's not going to be the same level, but it's going to give us, this time it gives us 1560, so we can write that on our chart back under peg A. Send our old mate back down to peg B. And we can take a reading of that. And again, because we've moved the tripod, we're going to get a different reading from peg from the first position. And this time we get uh, 1570, so we write that into our chart. And that's it, we're done. Old mate can come back, have a bit of a chat. And what we need to do is take our figures and take the peg A figures away from each other to work out the difference, and take the peg B figures away from each other to work out the difference. So in this case, 1540 take away 1560 is going to give us minus 20. Not really worried about the negative, we're just worried about this 20 mil difference between the points. And if we take away the peg B positions, we're going to get a 20 mil difference as well. So, according to that, our instrument is perfectly calibrated. Now, I would be surprised that you would get the exact number. If you did, that means you've read the staff extremely accurately and yeah, you've set it up extremely actually. I would expect a little bit of difference in those numbers 
But if you're starting to get 20 or 30 mil difference in those numbers, then your instrument needs recalibration. Um, I would also do the test a couple of times if I didn't get the right or a close reading the first time, just to eliminate any chance that you'd read a number wrong or you, know, you weren't being quite accurate with your readings. Do it a couple of times. And if you're still getting a bad reading or bad difference, then you need to get your instrument calibrated. So that's how we do a two-peak test.